When I first started FBA, I invested in two products to start. The first one ended up being a dud, and the second one had some serious potential. The top three sellers of this product were doing a little bit over $10,000 a month in revenue, and the reviews looked really good as well. There was only one with 125 reviews, and everyone else had under 100 reviews. Everything looked good, I was really happy with it. I found an awesome supplier, I differentiated, I was good to go. So I ended up ordering 560 units and having it sent directly to the warehouse. Everything arrived to the warehouse just fine. Started selling a little bit through PPC uh, to get some reviews. I got five reviews and that's when I did a viral launch. For my launch, I gave away 150 units over the course of seven days and I ended up getting position one in three days. So fast forward a couple weeks after my launch has ended and I'm still organically ranked number three. I managed to stick in the third position. So I was ranked, I was selling about 25 a day and I couldn't be happier. I ended up ordering 560 more to be air shipped and I was gonna order more down the road to be sea shipped but I wanted to get more in before Black Friday. The day before Black Friday, I ended up getting an email to my seller's account and it turned out to be from the second organically ranked competitor for my product. In their email they said I was infringing on their copyright and that my product shared too many artistic similarities to their product. They mentioned that I had 24 hours to respond to their claim and to follow through on their demands. And what the demand stated is that I close the listing, I pull the product, I ship them the remainder of the units, and I pay them 60% of the revenue I've already made on the product. Considering Black Friday was literally 12 hours away, I emailed them right back and I said, can I sell what I already have? Can I sell what's arriving soon that I ordered that's being shipped? And I'll pay you a royalty based on every unit sold. The idea behind that is I wanted to get rid of the inventory I had, wanted to get rid of the inventory that had being shipped to me, and I was gonna negotiate that 60% to try to maybe break even or even make a little bit of money. The thing is that one little email I sent trying to negotiate with them completely screwed up any chance I had of continuing to sell this product. Even though I did respond, it didn't even matter because they ended up filing the claim with Amazon anyways and Amazon pulled the listing. At this point, I decided it was a good idea to get a lawyer and have a professional take a look at this. So I listened to the Amazing Seller Podcast by Scott Volker. It's definitely recommended if you're into podcasts. And he had an uh, attorney on named Ted Limus, and he specializes in a lot of Amazon legal stuff. So I uh, shot him an email, explained the situation, and waited back to hear what he had to say. So Ted got back to me and said he did a quick search in the US copyright database, and he said the company that filed the claim does not have any active copyright for the product they accused me of infringing upon. And he told me if I did not admit guilt in that original email where I attempted to negotiate royalties, then they would be begging for my forgiveness for filing a claim with Amazon. Not only on the legal side, but a false claim on Amazon can definitely lead to a suspension. Now all Amazon did was pull my listing, but it definitely doesn't look good on the back end if they've seen that you've had copyright claims already on your account, if for some reason something happens again in the future. So I wanted to have that claim completely removed off my account, so what I did is I wrote up a full report outlining exactly what was going on. I submitted it to Seller Central and I also wrote up a physical copy and mailed it to the Amazon legal department. A few days later they get back to me and they say the only way this claim can be reversed is if you get the party that filed the claim to revoke it. And because I refused to follow their demands, they of course weren't gonna revoke the claim. So as of now on record, I still have one claim on my account. Uh, I don't see any negative effect of the claim being there. Um, my metrics are all good, they're in perfect condition, so um, I don't know if it's something in the back end where it can affect you as far as ranking for having that claim, but from what I've seen in my personal instance, that um, everything's pretty much normal. So Black Friday comes and goes, we're approaching the holiday. Uh, even though I didn't have any inventory and I wasn't selling this product anymore, I was still kind of curious like what kind of numbers the product was doing for the holidays. And it turns out the product was doing absolutely amazing during the holiday. It's a gift product, um, it, was, it was relatively new, it was trending upward, it was very popular, and the market for this product absolutely blew up. I'll show you a screenshot of it right now, and keep in mind I was ranked number three before I was shut down. You can see that the number three ranked product is doing about $125,000 just in the month of December. And of course, that's no guarantee that my product would be doing the exact same amount, but if you're going off based on rank alone, then that's a good indication that I'd be making somewhere around that much per month. I'd like to admit that going through all this didn't phase me at all, but the truth is it actually was pretty devastating 
for this to happen and then to see what I missed out on. So after pulling all of my inventory and having it delivered to my house, I had to figure out a way to liquidate all this extra merchandise. I ended up hooking up with a local wholesale company and they offered to drop ship my product through their various sales channels. They were able to get my product approved on Woot.com to participate in a special sales event. So my product was approved to be an app exclusive for the event. So fast forward two weeks later, the event takes place and I end up selling out in one day. It did so well that the event coordinator recommended that we participate in the next event, which was not only going to be featured on the app, but on the website as well. So the wholesale company had me design a whole new product that was very similar to the one I had. They ended up buying 5,000 of them to be sold in future events. But with this capital, I was able to reinvest in multiple different products and I was finally able to get my Amazon business off the ground. So what did I learn with all this and what advice do I have to pass on to you? I wouldn't recommend launching anything that's considered an artistic piece. Uh, the reason for that is if the original creator thinks it's too close to their intellectual property, then they can file a claim, they can come after you legally through the courts, and you really just wanna stay clear of any kind of potential litigation. That being said, yes, you can have someone create something for you, get the rights from them, or you can create it yourself. Just keep in mind, if you do something like that, there's always a chance that someone could come along and say, hey, this is too close to my artwork, and then they could take you to court, they can file a claim on Amazon, like what happened to me. So just be leery of that and um, go for it at your own risk. If you do see some indication that something could be patented, uh, in my personal opinion, I think you should just move on because it's absolutely not worth getting hit with a copyright claim or going to court. So there's plenty of other products out there. Just keep going, you'll find something, don't risk it. If you really are adamant on pursuing a product that may or may not be protected by a patent, uh, you can hire a patent lawyer and they'll go deep and try to find um, any kind of potential problems with your product and to see if it is in fact protected by a patent. The lawyers run about $500, so definitely make sure you are serious before you hire a lawyer because who wants to waste $500 on a product you're just gonna give up on later. If you don't wanna pay $500 and you really don't trust your judgment, uh, you can actually pay $5 or $10 to someone on Fiverr that will look up and do patent research for you. Of course, they're not real lawyers. Um, there is a chance that they're not going to do a well enough job. Um, from what I've seen, they do a pretty thorough research and it's definitely far better than anything I could do. So before I make that final judgment, if I want to follow through with a product, I'll hire one of these Fiverr um, researchers and I'll have them check it over and make sure that I'm good to go. And I'll leave a link down in the description of the researchers that I use that I know do solid work. So check that out if you're interested. So what do you do if you're hit with a patent, copyright, or trademark claim? If they extend the courtesy of first contacting you before contacting Amazon, you can choose to respond or not. However, if they contact Amazon first, you are absolutely required to respond. Where they go through you or they go through Amazon, just I absolutely recommend, and I can't stress this enough, just shut up and get a lawyer. Don't admit guilt like I did. Don't go off on, don't get angry. Don't, don't, don't make it a lot worse for you than it already is. If you let a professional deal with it, that they're gonna take care of you way better than you can take care of yourself and it's just best to leave it up to a professional. So just to wrap it up, I don't wanna to get too Ty lopez -y on you, but after I pulled my product from the Amazon warehouse, I only had $60 left in my bank account before I hooked up with this wholesale company. I wanna show you an infograph that I actually think about quite a bit. Uh, it shows the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur, and I think it perfectly demonstrates what it's like as you're building your business. So you start off, you're all excited, and then something goes wrong. But then something goes right and you realize this is working, um, I could do this, and then something goes wrong again. And you kind of start to lose hope, but then another opportunity comes along and you're significantly higher than where you were on the last step. Every time you get shot down a little bit, you end up coming back stronger than where you were before. And every rebound, you're climbing a steady trend and you're significantly farther ahead than you were when you started. So just learn from your mistakes, make adjustments, pivot if you have to, and just keep moving forward and keep climbing that upward trend. Just a disclaimer, I'm, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I don't claim to be one. This, this isn't legal advice. I'm just kind of documenting the steps that I took from what happened to me just to kind of prevent it from happening to you. If you do have any legal questions at all, I definitely recommend consulting a lawyer. To wrap it up, do your homework, be safe, 
Uh, don't get involved in any of these legal issues and just avoid it at all costs because it's just a massive headache. So that's it for this one. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel for future videos. Like this video if you enjoyed it, if you learned something. And as always, thanks for watching.